today we're on the 100 yard range here and we're going to take the M4 and I'm going to set it back up uh, the way it comes from the factory and I'm going to go from there and show you how to do a complete and thorough uh, 25 yard zero on your rifle and then after you get that 25 yard zero you can easily set it up for 50 yards, 100 yards, whatever you want to set it up as. Took my EO tech off and put my iron sights back on. I did mark that. I took my EO tech off and marked it in permanent marker. I'll just put it back on there when I get done with this project. And so uh, you can see I got my glasses on today. I don't uh, shoot with my glasses a whole lot, but if I need the uh, best accuracy I can possibly get, then I put my glasses on. And uh, so uh, I've had the same uh, eyesight since I was in the seventh grade. So uh, I don't uh, pull these glasses out too much for shooting, but in this case I will. And it's important for you too, if you wear glasses and can get by without it, uh, a lot of times you might feel comfortable shooting, but when you get your zero, you wanna be as accurate as you possibly can. And so I recommend putting on your glasses. Now, normally you would also uh, zero your weapon at 25 yards and you would do that from the uh, prone position now secondly you would uh, normally zero your weapon from the prone position at 25 yards and uh, I'm not going to do that today I'm going to use the sitting position I'm very confident and very comfortable with my uh, sitting position and uh, I'll be shooting off a of concrete so I'm going to uh, use the sitting position for this. I'm very confident in it. And so uh, if you're not very confident in your sitting position, uh, then I would highly recommend that you fire uh, with as much accuracy as possible as far as your vision goes and from the most stable position uh, that you can possibly get, which will be a good prone position. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the rifle. And what I'm going to do is, since I have the carry handle rear sight, and I have the uh, standard uh, M16A2 front sight post, uh, which is elevated up off the barrel itself, and it's not uh, on a rail or anything like that, uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, flush my front sight post, and I'm going to make sure that my rear sight is fully seated all the way at its lowest position. And so I'll show you that. Uh, up close and personal and get that set up so that I'm uh, ready to take my first shots. All right, what you have here is your front sight post. And as you can see, this uh, front sight post is slightly elevated above the platform that it, that it revolves in. Now this is, you can spin it counterclockwise or clockwise. And right now this front sight post has been turned up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate this front sight post so that this base right where my fingernail is pointing so that that base comes down and is flush with this platform and that's what we call a flush front sight post and that's going to always be your starting point now the higher you move this front sight post the lower your round will strike on the target and the lower that you move this front sight post will cause the impact of your round to strike higher on the target. So the ideal place to start is going to be flush. Here's a good look at the rear sight aperture. You can see that the notch is cut here on the, on the rear sight aperture itself and it's to be lined up with these markings that go along this surface here. There's a large marking right in the center, and that will be your center point. If you don't trust your center point, then you can, uh, you can rotate this wheel all the way to one side or the other, count all the clicks across, divide that in half, and then uh, let's just say that this took 30 clicks to move this rear sight aperture from the extreme left to the extreme right, then you would divide that by two, and of course that's 15 move it 15 clicks back and you would be centered but uh, i trust this having uh, used it so i'm going to use that uh, that center marking 
as my starting point. Flush on the front sight, centered on the rear sight. I got me a regular carpentry nail for adjusting my front sight post. My front sight post is flush. My rear sight post is centered and all the way seated. And normally right by your lowest setting on the rear sight, you'll have a little Z. It should be two clicks from uh, its lowest setting. So if you've got that Z, go ahead and put it on there. That stands for the zero. And uh, take your three well-aimed shots. Centered rear sight, flush front sight. Three rounds at 25 yards. Okay, this is our first group. Not as tight as I would like it, but that's all right. We just find our group, whatever it is, the total of the three. Draw a line down the middle. Draw a line through the middle horizontally. And so basically, this is our reference point. And we can see here that it's approximately three inches right of center. And it's approximately two and a half inches uh, high of center so this and we're going to make that we're going to use that information to make our first adjustment okay we want to move the strike of our round down two and a half inches approximately so we're going to rotate this front sight post counterclockwise and that'll raise the front sight Okay, here is my second round of three shots. We have one, two, and three. Now, when I look at a group like that, I, I really do hate that. But we're going to use the same uh, formula as we used here. We're going to dissect the group and use the center as a reference. So center would be here horizontally and here vertically. So moving the front sight post up five clicks moved the impact of the round down to the center of this group we're going to use uh, an inch and three quarters or two inches so approximately two inches so we're going to use that number and we're going to uh, be satisfied that the center of this group intersects with the target. Now, we may have to make another adjustment up or down, but we're going to make the adjustment now. I had moved the rear sight eight clicks to the left, and it only moved the center from here to here. It only moved it one inch. So that could be shooter error. I'm going to move it eight more clicks, and we'll see. Uh, where that puts us at and then we'll make a final adjustment after that. My dope or my data on previous engagement, I'm now at five up on the front sight post and 16 left on the rear sight aperture. So dissect it. I need to move the round at least another inch over, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go four on my rear sight post because one click should be about a quarter of an inch. Uh, depends on the shooter. I may be shooting right, but uh, what I've got from here to here, from here to here, left is 16 so far. So I'm going to go four more clicks on that rear sight, and I'm going to move the front sight up to 
drop this center about a quarter or a half an inch so I'm going to go two clicks up on my front sight post and I'm going to go four clicks left on my rear sight aperture. Okay. So what I did was overcompensated. It's a good group. It's a real good group. And when you just get out here cold, take your first couple of shots, you, your groups probably be uh, less than ideal depending on your skill, but the more you shoot, the more you relax and get into the, your, to your groove there, you'll tighten them up a little bit. And that, it's okay, it's not spectacular, but it's okay. So our center of the group's gonna be right there. I'm gonna come back now and uh, go one down on the front sight post to raise it back up, to raise the impact back up. And I'm going to go two. Remember I was here and I moved it four left and brought it over to here. So I'm gonna split that difference back and try to get us in the center. And so I'm gonna go one up on the front sight post and two right on the rear sight aperture and that'll give me my zero, I do believe. I didn't like that last shot. We well, can't never go by that, I don't think. Not too good. Okay, so, got two rounds right here. One right here. And that might be the last one because I, it didn't feel the same as the first two. So I'm gonna move it again uh, back to 16 left. I'm at 18 left now. So I'll move it back to 16 left and try it again. And uh, that should be it which is what I said last time, but you never can tell. I may have overcompensated here. Remember these groups were larger out here. So the tighter your groups get, the finer you can uh, make these adjustments. Now I'm at uh, six up on the front sight post and 16 left on the rear sight post, which is exactly the same as I had on that rifle the last time I'd done a 25 yard zero which just shows the consistency of this method, whether you're uh, putting a 15, I mean, excuse me, whether you're putting a 25 yard, 50 yard, 100 yard zero on your rifle, when you have the rifle set up the same and you are taking well-aimed shots and you have proper marksmanship, your zero will be your zero, your battle sight zero. Your dope is your dope on your rifle. And uh, so it's a pretty good confirmation of this uh, technique. I'm gonna fire five rounds this time, not because that's a standard or anything, but because out of a box of 20, that's the, the amount of rounds I have left. So I'm gonna uh, fire the remaining five rounds and uh, I'm very, very sure this is going to be my uh, my zero. And if I have a flyer or something like that and the round is off, uh, that's not even going to bother me too much. Five well uh, placed shots will tell me where the zero is, and any errant shots will tell me uh, what I'm doing wrong. So uh, that's uh, maybe for a different class, but here we go.
Okay, it's just as I thought. I said I would probably uh, put a flyer out here, and I did. Now that increased the size of my group greatly, but here's two shots here that are connected and one here. One off to the left there. But that's my zero. I could possibly uh, move that group down just a little bit, but I think uh, that's about as good as you're going to fine tune it with open sights. Uh, I could put the uh, EOTech back on there and probably refine that group right down inside that edge. But as far as the 25 yard zero goes, that's pretty good. And move it out to 100 yards and the rounds would start to strike high somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, four to six inches and uh, out to 200 yards I would probably be shooting somewhere in the neighborhood of five to eight inches high somewhere in that neighborhood taking into consideration sight picture and uh, visibility and different things like that out at 300 yards if I had a good clear day uh, good conditions, I should say, rather than a clear day. If I had good conditions, that round should come right back down to where it is now. Uh, your 25-yard zero is going to also be your 300-yard zero. So, that's why most of your sights say, your iron sights say, 6 or 8 slash 300 or 8 slash three or something to that effect so there you go that's how you zero your weapon hope you enjoyed it hope it works for you